Hey guys, welcome to this broadcast. I'm Dr. Duck Vong, world famous bariatric surgeon, author of 13 books. Why am I talking about coronavirus? It's because the number one risk factor for poor outcomes from coronavirus is not age, it's not diabetes, it's actually morbid obesity. So this is really affecting my following. And um, I'm gonna talk today about a new report that just came out on October 15th. Today is October 18th. I spent yesterday reading up on it. And um, I want to break that down for you guys today. I'm actually going to show you this actual report. I'm going to pull it up on the screen. We're going to talk about the science behind it. Uh, is it is it a good study? Is it not a good study? We're also going to talk about uh, hydroxychloroquine, interferon, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So, um, and let me, let me, let's do some numbers really quick. Today is October 18th. The United States is currently still in its first wave. Uh, it, we are not in our third wave. We've never gotten over the first wave. Okay. So in July, we hit, a, um, I think the highest day, one day total we had was around 75,000 cases, but we um, averaged about 70,000 cases. And then finally our leaders were like, well, this shit's not working. Maybe we should roll back. So that we started closing back down, closing down the beaches, locking down the cities again. And then the numbers went down, 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 down. We got down to about 35,000 to 40,000 range, really around 40,000. And then what? Open up the schools. Open up the fucking schools. Open up the universities. Got to have my football. Got to have football and baseball. Right? And so now um, they started climbing back up. And instead of saying, well, our number's going back up, maybe we should like rethink this strategy. No, let's just keep going, fuckers. Let's just ram her, get her done, get her done. So you start, you know, we kept going and uh, universities opened back up. And now look at us, look at us. Today's October 18th. And a couple of days ago, we had 70,000 cases again. So basically July, August, September, we learned nothing. We learned nothing from our spike in July. Now, some people might go, but Dr. Vaughn, Europe's not doing so hot either. Well, I've been talking about Europe in my challenge group for about a month and a half before anybody started talking about it. I said, look, there's something happening in Spain. Their numbers are going up really badly. And this was back when France had nothing, had low cases. UK was all celebrating. I said, I think, I think Europe is about to hit its second wave. I said this about two weeks ago. I'm sorry, two months ago. And now we are in a full blown second wave. And some people say, well, they're not any better. Well, listen, they had a normal, decent summer. They at least had two months where they crushed it down. They got the cases low. Now their people, people got a break from it, right? So they got to go out. They got to live a little bit. Now they're going to shut back down again. And some countries are doing a full lockdown. France just went down in like a pretty extreme lockdown. Uh, UK is slowly rolling out lockdowns and there's still, there's, there's protests there too. There are arguments about it. It is what, you know, and I hate saying that cause that's gotten a bad, bad rap now. It is what it is, but it's true. That's just where we are. So you can sit there and say, you know, Europe is, look at Europe, it's doing, not doing so good. Well, I mean, France is like 20,000 cases, which at their peak back in April is 5,000 cases. So it's four, four times, but we are not, I mean, we have seven in the U S we have 70,000 cases a day. Why the fuck are we even bragging? What are we bragging about? This is really ridiculous, you know? So Americans, I, I don't know what we're doing. Um, so Here's a problem. This is what happens when you get into politics and leave behind the science. If you go back to my early videos, I said, um, and this was when uh, we're going to talk about hydroxychloroquine real quick, and then we're going to go into the study. Uh, I said, I said, um, hydroxychloroquine, uh, hydroxy. See if I can spell this right. Chloroquine um, didn't make any sense. Okay. So when this first started and everybody was trying to tout hydroxychloroquine, et cetera, et cetera, I said, guys, if you understand how hydroxychloroquine works, it doesn't make any sense. You got to have hydroxychloroquine on board 
before you catch coronavirus. Otherwise, it doesn't make any, it doesn't really work. And you need some zinc in there too. So it's not hydroxychloroquine by itself. It also involves zinc. So no, Dr. Vong, the birds are entitled to the dig, 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 dig. And now look, hydroxychloroquine um, doesn't work. And nobody's giving hydroxychloroquine. So if your doctor is giving you hydroxychloroquine, I would find a new doctor. I really, really would. So now the new pair, uh, therapeutics, um, Trump, when he got it, he had COVID very early. We see um, very early in his course. And they've, they've released this. So this is public news. Don't even go there with, you're not his doctor. Why are you talking about him? You know, you got an issue, person. Like, I, I'm just explaining what you can find readily in the news. Okay, so chill the fuck out. Trump, very early in his course, got taken to Walter Reed Hospital. There we know he received some supplements like vitamin D, zinc. But medicine-wise, he, um, he got uh, remdesivir. Methazone and um, the uh, Regeneron, Regeneron cocktail. Regeneron is a company. It's not uh, the medicine. Um, I might have misspelled Remdesivir. So um, now here's what the average person doesn't understand. There is no one no study where there's one person that's considered a good study that's called a state a case study and that's one of the lowest level evidences because the truth of the matter is we don't really know which one medicine got president trump uh, better it could have been the combination it could have been two two of the three or or three of the six he could have gotten better by himself that's why this. That's why this isn't considered science, right? When 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 somebody says, "Oh, I took this medicine, and it made me feel better," right? Well, it could have been a placebo. It could have been a sugar pill. I'm not saying they gave President Trump a sugar pill. I'm just saying that when someone says, "I took this supplement, it made me better," that's not evidence. That's not science. Okay. So now the World Health Organization, and we're, and we're going to pull this up here in a second. The World Health Organization on October 15th released a new study on uh, remdesivir. Let's see if I can spell it right this time. Remdesivir. Okay. So this literally just came out uh, three days ago, and um, and let's let's take a look at it. Okay. Now this is what's called an interim report. And this is the same, it's an ongoing study. And this is the same study that debunked hydroxychloroquine the first time. Who remembers that? About, uh, I guess it would have been July, no, early August, early August. Um, they said, you know, remdesivir, I mean, uh, hydroxychloroquine doesn't work. Then you had the weird witch doctor lady come out. <laughs> the demon semen lady, remember? The late the doctor here in Houston who said that demons come to you in the middle of the night and impregnate you. To which I responded, "Oh great, we have a lady who's promoting demon semen," and um, that's uh, and, and you know Trump makes the mistake of sharing that information and tweeting it and retweeting it, and I'm just like, and it doesn't matter. It's I don't care the color. Uh, red or blue. I mean, if a Democrat president had done the same thing, I would have been like, what the hell is wrong with, with you person? All right. So that's right, Matt Sims, astral plane orgies. So let's take a look at this uh, study. All right. So I'm going to share my screen with you real quick. This is um, super important. All right. Cool. All right. Can y'all see this? I'm going to zoom in. This is... Okay, here we go. Um, this is a preprint server. So in other words, this abstract has been submitted 
but it has not been peer peer reviewed. That's super important that you guys understand this. It's uh, the actual study is called repurposed antiviral drugs for COVID-19 interim world health organization, solidarity trial results. So the thing that we're looking at is the solidarity trial, right? Um, so, and this was released October 15th. It has not been peer reviewed. Let's read this together real quick. Um, okay. They looked at mortality trials and hospitalized COVID-19 for four repurposed drugs. The drugs were remdesivir, hydroxychloroquine, lopinavir, and interferon beta one, right? That's it. Um, Remdesivir has, uh, as I've said before, is not approved for any diseases worldwide, right? It doesn't, it doesn't help. They were hoping it would help with uh, Ebola, uh, maybe AIDS and HIV. It showed zero benefit in any of those diseases. And somehow we started touting it as this miracle cure for coronavirus. Um, they also looked at hydroxychloroquine, which we already talked about. I don't know much about lopinavir and, and interferon. You can use those for to treating hepatitis and, uh, and a, a bunch of other diseases. All right, uh, COVID-19 inpatients. So these are people in the hospital were randomized between um, uh, locally available drugs and a control. So this is a control trial. It is um, randomized, right? And they were looking at intent to treat of uh, four of uh, four things, they were looking at uh, death. They were looking at so mortality, dying. They looked at um, risk for intubation, and they were looking for hospital stay. Okay. Um, this study involved four hundred and five hospitals in thirty countries. So this study that's called um, the Solidarity Trial includes 30 different countries. That's important too. You wanna, this is a global pandemic. You wanna look at the worldwide data. You don't wanna look at just data in your one little hospital in your one little community. Okay, what are the bigger, bigger numbers? Okay, um, so it's 405 hospitals in 30 countries 11,266 adults were randomized. That's important that you understand that it's randomized. So they randomly either received treatment or did not receive treatment. And then they looked and saw the results. So 2,750 were allocated remdesivir, 954 hydroxychloroquine, uh, 1411 lopinavir, and 651 interferon plus lopinavir, 1412 interferon only, and compare that to 4,088 no study drug. Compliance was good, 1,253 deaths, that yada, yada, yada. Okay, so conclusions. Um, here we go. No drug, no study drug definitely reduced mortality in unventilated patients or in other subgroup of entry characteristics. So no drug affected any type of patients uh, initiation of ventilation, ventilation or hospitalization duration. So, um, no drug, none, none of those four drugs reduce mortality, uh, held off ventilator or, um, decreased hospitalization stay. So conclusions, remdesivir, hydroxychloroquine, lopinavir, and interferon regimens appear to have little or no effect on hospitalized COVID-19s as indicated by overall mortality, initiation of ventilation, and duration of hospital stay. The mortality findings contain most of the randomized evidence on remdesivir are consistent with main analysis of mortality in all major trials, okay? So that's pretty much the study. Uh, it's an interim report, okay? So let me, let me recapsulate, uh, recapture these for you guys. So um, what number am I, three? So this is a CDC, I'm sorry, a World Health Organization interim report, randomized uh, prospective study of 11,000 
plus patience. All right. This, if you remember, recall my um, talk on Friday a couple of days ago about studies. You want big studies. Though a study that uh, President Trump was talking about that 85% of people have uh, uh, who wear masks catch COVID only had 154 people in that arm and, uh, and 160 or so people in the uh, control group. So that's not good. And it was also a retrospective survey. It was looking back and taking a survey for people who knew, already knew their status. It's a, it's a very weak study. This is a much better study. Okay, this is a much better study. The World Health Organization, remember this is 405 hospitals, huge number, 30, 3 0, 30 different countries, 11,000 plus patients, over what was it, 2,700 re received remdesivir. All right. Um, and it was randomized and it was prospective. And the study shows. I'm going to say suggests because not really should suggest uh, no benefit with remdesivir, um, oxychloroquine. And if you're on. Okay. Now, this is super important. I'm going to tell you what you won't see is uh, our politicians talking about this. This is not sexy. It's not hopeful. It's another nail in the coffin, as they say. It's another failure. But like Edison, Thomas Edison, the inventor of the light bulb, who tried something like a thousand different filaments before he found the right one. Um, and he said, and a reporter asked him, Professor Edison, like, what kept you going? Like you, you failed a thousand times trying to invent this light bulb. And he said, I haven't failed a thousand times. I've discovered a thousand ways it doesn't work. So problem is a lot of people will, who are scared of science or misunderstand science, they'll think of this as, um, like a setback bad news, Dr. Vong, you're a fear monger, you're a naysayer, you're like, I don't know why you didn't pay more attention in school. I'm, I am not fear mongering. I am not a naysayer. I am just pointing out this thing called science. The last time you watched anything about science, it was a movie from the 80s called Weird Science. <laughs> right? And uh, Kelly LeBrock. All I'm saying, that's all I'm saying, Kelly LeBron. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm going to say. So if as long as uh, as a country or as a world, we don't embrace the scientific method, uh, we will always have division, right? This, this is, we have a real world, real time, real life scientific method happening before our eyes. That's all this is. We jumped on the remdesivir bandwagon with a small, couple of small studies. And now we've grown it to a bigger study. And now the interim report seems to indicate that there is no benefit with remdesivir. Okay. So what we have to remember is that this isn't failure. This is getting closer and closer to the truth. Right. But you're not going to hear this come from uh, our leadership. Why not? Because he he was like, I got a rib desert. It was amazing. It's a cure. It's not a fucking cure. Okay. So I, I want to say this right now. We currently do not have a cure for coronavirus. Um, this is important because some of our leadership is start is saying this, and it is. Um, a mistake to mislead people. There is in no way on God's green earth do, are we even close to a cure. And even a vaccine is not a cure. Dr. Wong, what if we get a vaccine? A vaccine is not a cure. Okay. I promise you. Um, and I, look, give me a second before you guys jump on my case. A vaccine is not going to be a cure right? It's going to suppress the transmission rate, 
so that coronavirus becomes what's called endemic. You've heard of epidemic. And then starting in March of 2020, you learn the word pandemic. Put this in the comment section for me. Now I'm going to teach a new word. Endemic, E-endemic, E-endemic. That's the new word for you guys, right? Coronavirus is going to become endemic. It is going to be with us for a long time. Uh, and then we're going to forget about it until next time. Why is vaccine until the next super virus comes? Why is a vaccine not a cure, Dr. Vong? Why is a vaccine not a cure? Because a, a, several reasons, but pay attention right now. A vaccine will not be a cure for several reasons. Number one, um, in order for a vaccine to pass, they are hoping, well, they, they are, they are hoping for 70% effectiveness, but they will pass a vaccine if it's 50% effective. So number seven, a vaccine all, um, needs to be only 50% effective to get approved. Now let me tell you something. I don't know about you, but the last time I checked, Anything that's 50% effective is a coin toss. Heads or tails, yes or no. You take it or you don't take it. Now listen, some fuckers out there are going to say, but Dr. Vong, 50% effective is better than zero, isn't it, Dr. V? And the answer is we don't know. We don't know, right? Why don't we know? Well, we don't know what will be the side effects. Are there side effects? Like a lot of people who have a flu vaccine, a uh, seasonal flu vaccine, experience flu-like symptoms. Did they catch the flu? Most likely not. Did it trigger a higher immune response that made them feel like they had body aches and fevers? And yes, right? So do you want to do that for a 50% effective vaccine? Well, that's what the seasonal flu vaccine often is, is 50% effective. But yet we take it by the billions and hundreds of billions of dollars worth. Right, so there's a financial cost to it. Now, number eight, and I'll do another broadcast about that. We currently do not know about this problem. Now, our pre President Trump says that he's immune to, he, I don't know, he goes, I don't know, maybe I'm immune, maybe not, I don't know. Like, dude. I think I'm immune. I think I'm cured. I think I can't catch anymore. That's what they say. Maybe they say. Some people say. Maybe they say. Like, what the fuck's wrong with you? Who talks like that? We currently do not know about lasting immunity. We don't. We have good cases now of people. We have good cases. We have good, good evidence now of people catching the coronavirus a second time. So we don't know. And in fact, there was something like, I think in the Netherlands, maybe some, the first person just died from his second case of coronavirus. Um, he survived it the first time, caught it again and died the second time. So we currently do not know about lasting immunity. That means we currently don't know if you get a vaccine for coronavirus, will it last? How long will it last for? Will it last for the rest of your life, like measles or chicken pox? Or will it need a booster shot, like uh, hepatitis B? Or will it not work at all, like HIV? You guys understand that it's been, see, 1990-ish, 91, Magic Johnson announced he had HIV. So mid-85, we'll, we'll call it 1990, because that's when it became the, to the American conscious, make the math easier. That's 30 years. If you say early 80s, that's 40 years. And we don't have a vaccine for HIV, guys. We don't. We might never have a vaccine for coronavirus. Okay? We might not. It might become endemic. Or it might be 50 60% effective. And we immunize. We get enough of the public to buy uh, or high-risk population. I don't know how they'll figure it out. High-risk populations, uh, frontline workers, healthcare workers, they might be required by their jobs and nursing home people to get their annual six every six months. We don't know coronavirus vaccination. We just don't know yet, right? Which equals ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. 
which is fine. I have nothing against people making money and business making money. They need to make money, but this needs to go into your decision making. When you think about what's being said, the news, the politics, I hope that you guys recognize I'm trying to give you good scientific proof. So if you have found this um, helpful, then please hit share real quick. And then what I'm going to do is going to one more time show you the study. And then I am going to test myself right here live with a my own COVID rapid test that I I put together these kits. You can purchase these from me. Um, the best way to get them from me is to go to my Facebook page, uh, facebook.com slash Dr. Vong. It's scrolling there at the bottom. Send me a message. Say, Dr. Vong, I want to know about your COVID rapid test. Um, these sell online from anywhere. Well, the test sells online. Uh, I'm the only one who makes these kits. The test sells online by itself for anywhere from 100 to $250. I will sell these kits for five for 500. So you're saving money there, but here's the big deal today. If you message me today, I will wholesale you these for 50 bucks, 50 bucks, minimum order of 40, minimum order of 40. That, that's a $2,000 investment, but you can re you can resell them. I'll send you 40. You keep 10 for yourself. You resell 30. At $100 each, that's 3000 bucks. You made $1,000. You have 10 to use for yourself. I hope I did that math not too fast. Okay, so let me um, talk about, show you this study uh, really quickly again. So let me share my screen. Okay, so what we're talking about here is this study. This is a report. Uh, released by the uh, World Health Organization on October 15th. Today is October 18th. This has not been peer reviewed. It's called the Solidarity, Solidarity Trial Results. And you can find this online. It has not been peer reviewed, but I don't expect it to change much. It is a, a study that is called the Solidarity Trial run by the World Health Organization. It includes here's the number right here 405 hospitals in 30 countries this is a global epidemic so you have to show it um, from multiple countries 11,266 adults were randomized 2,750 were given randomized so that means some people got it some people didn't 2,750 got remdesivir 954 got hydroxychloroquine 1411 got lopinavir and um into and 1400 1412 got interferon only and 4088 got no study drug what they looked at was mortality and they looked at a uh, delay to ventilation initiation of ventilation or hospital stay and what they concluded was this remdesivir hydroxychloroquine lopinavir and interferon regimens appear to have little or no effect on hospitalized COVID-19 as indicated by mortality, initiation of ventilation and duration of hospital stay. So um, this, this, this is the report, the solidarity trial interim report, okay? No benefits. This study is a big controlled, randomized prospective study involving over 11,000 patients um, 30 countries, 405 hospitals, um, 2,700 people got remdesivir and it shows no benefits in terms of decreased mortality, uh, initiation of ventilation or hospital stay. So the little early data reports do not factor out, do not um, translate to these larger studies. Okay. So that's what I want to talk about. There it is. There's your report. I hope you liked this uh, video.